Okay, this is just a quick introduction to Tinkercad, which is a 3D design software. So when you log into Tinkercad and you enter your creative space, you will have this area here, your, de your uh, dashboard. It's on the left-hand side, you've got 3D designs, you can do circuits, code blocks, lessons, etc. But let's just focus on 3D designs today. Let's create a new design by clicking on that. When you log in, you'll be given your work space, your work plane to work on. And one of the first things you need to do is go up to the top and it always gives you a funny name for your project. But let's change this to story dice or die, depending on which, uh, if you're working on a singular one, it's die, but it, we're gonna, I'm gonna make multiple, so I'm gonna get dice. So story dice like so. This is your work plane. So this is like the table or the paper that you're working on. So if I just show you, this is your table, okay? So using the rotational die, the rotational cube up here, you can spin that around and view your workspace like that. If you end up a little bit disorientated, you don't know where you are, just click the home and it'll take you back to that view. Always take you back to that view there. Uh, this one here is fit all in view. So if you're creating lots of different shapes, lots of different things going on, and you want to fit everything back into view, you zoomed in too far, just click fit it all in view and it will zoom back out so everything is in view for you. The zoom in tool, the zoom out tool. You can also do this with a wheel on your mouse, by the way, or if you're using anything touch screen, just slide in with your fingers, uh, slide in or slide out with your fingers. Down below, there is the switch to flat view. Don't worry about that. We're not using that today. That's something else. We'll talk about that in the future. Over the right hand side then, you've then got all these really cool things you can do with it. There's uh, different uh, options there, but we're just gonna work on basic shapes today. But I do definitely recommend playing around with this as much as possible. The more you play around with it, look at the different options, the more amazing things you can do with Tinkercad. But we're just gonna stick with basic shapes. There's loads of different ones down here, but I'm gonna be creating a die or dice. So there's one there for you. It's up to you, you know, you could use any different shapes there, but I'm just gonna use this for now. I'm gonna click and I'm going to drag it onto my work plane or workspace like that. And I, there I have my first 3D shape. Now you might think, well, how big is this? If you click on it, click on the corner or just hover over the corner, it brings up the size that it is. So if you click on that, I can then click on this and change it. And I'm gonna change it to 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. That's three centimeters. So everything is in millimeters like that. And then if I use my little rotate tool, I can see my cube, it's a bit squashed because I haven't changed the height. So I've changed the length and the width. I now need to change the height. So if I click on the top one, I then change that to 30 as well. And then I've changed all three axes to 30 mil. And I've got my cube just like that. Click off it, there it is. Now you could add numbers to this, like a normal die or dice, but I'm gonna add uh, words to it because mine is going to be a story by your dice and that's going to be to help an author tell a story so it gives them different ideas for different types of stories the more you, uh, die or dice they create the more dice they roll the different options for stories they get so i'm going to click on the text tool i'm just going to show you how to use text to start off with so if you just click and drag text there um, you can then click on it and change this so i'm just going to say hello like that, I can change the font to whatever I want, like that. You can then change it around. You can see it's quite thick, quite tall off the page, and I can then zoom that down this way. So I can change the height that way. I can change the height by actually physically clicking on there or changing that, for example. So I can actually automatically change that. Um, but as you can see that there, you can also change any 3D shape, the color of any 3D shape by clicking on the color like that if you want to. And you might think, I don't want that anymore. How do I get rid of it? Just click on it and just click the delete button on your keyboard or there's a little trash can up here like that. If you don't want to undo anything, so if at any time you make a mistake, you think, oh no, how, what do I do? Just click undo. And you can do that as many times or redo as many times as you need to. Okay, so don't panic, just play around and there's always tutorials out there. There's loads on Tinkercad, tutorials on how to do things, YouTube videos on how to do things uh, and how to uh, create your creations. So there's my die. I now wanna apply words to my die. So I've now got it, I click on that. I'm now gonna click on work plane because I wanna create a work plane on my die. So I click and drag and then I can select the different sides as, as I want, but I'm just gonna create the top 
here like that. So you can see I've added a new work plane to the top of my cube. So I'm going to collect my, select my text, drag, drop over top of my cube, but obviously it's very, very big. So just like I did before, it's telling me the sizes already. I'm going to change this to say 25 because it needs to be smaller than 30, remember, by 25. Uh, if you look at it, it's a bit squashed because it's square. I've entered square sizes when it really needs to be rectangular sizes, ideally. So let's change that again. So just click on there. And let's change this to 15 height, like that. That's much better. Now it's rectangular. It works much better. Now all I can do is I can click. I can drag that in if I want to. I don't want to do that. So let's take off that. I want to drag, select and drag my text wherever I want to. I'm going to put it over top of my cube. And then I need to see this better. So I'm going to click on the top of the rotational cube to have a look at it better. I'm also going to zoom in to see what that looks like. It's still a bit big. It's overhanging because I've got these uh, what we call beveled edges, these rounded edges. So I'm going to change the size of it again, just like I did before. Click. And I'm going to, this time I'm going to make it 20 by 10. Let's see how that works. 20 by 10. Much better. So let's go on the top. Great. I'm happy with the size, but you can see it's not really in the middle. It's not really in the center. So what I do is I select both by clicking and dragging. I then go up to the top right here to this little tool here. It looks like a little bar graph. Click align. And then it's got these little lines coming out, these dots. If I click this one and I click this one. It automatically aligns it within that square, within that top of the die for me. Okay, so I can just check that out. Happy with that. Yeah, really happy with that. Like so. Let's click off that. And now I've got my thing. Now be careful. This isn't one part now. Okay, this is still two separate parts. The text and the cube are still two separate parts. We can join them together as one part if we want to. Or what I want to do with this is... It's a bit tall, so I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. Let's try Let's do that. Now, I want this. If I was to roll this dice or die, it's going to um, bobble up and down, isn't it? Because the text is on top. Okay. So I want to make it go inside the die so it's a bit like a hole inside. Okay. So the way I can do that is select it, go to hole. Okay. And then let's just check this out. Has that gone in? No, it's still standing up on top. So we need to drag this down go inside like that and then if you look uh, very carefully that's inside there so if i click off the work so if i go back to work plane let's zoom out a second and i click the work plane originally on you can now see the text is embossed inside the die okay so that's what i want so when i roll it it's a flat surface with the text in, embossed inside it. Now let's add another side to my die. So you do exactly the same thing. Work plane. This time I'm going to add text to the side like that. Let's go, let's rotate this around a little bit. Text to the side. Exactly the same problem again. It's a bit too big. I'm going to add, change the text now to the type of story that I might want my, my author to write. So let's put myths, a mythical story. For example, so I've got that there, and then again, needs to change the size of it like I did before. So click on the corner. Remember, it was 20 by 10, remember? So 10 by 20. Click off there. Again, needs to drag over like that. Click on the right side like I did before. Click, drag. Let's go align there and there. Then Click off, have a look, a bit too tall, click on it, drag it down. But remember, I want it as a hole, so select it, hole, and then let's, before I change these size, uh, sizes, I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy, it goes in. If you go too deep, it'll get lost, so you don't want to go too deep with it, okay? Um, and you can obviously set this as well to minus... It needs to be a minus, obviously, minus three millimeters. And then it's like that. We'll take that round, click home. And remember, I want my work plane back where I had it before, like that. So now I've got myths embossed in the side of my cube. 
like that. And I would just do the same on every side, adding in my different text that I want all the way around like that. Okay, and then what you, if you've finished with your work, if you click back up in the top left in Tinkercad dashboard, like that, it'll take you back to where we started at the very start. And you will see that this is automatically saved. So you don't need to click save or anything like that. It will automatically save it to there. Okay, so then all you've got to do is just click on the story dice and you can keep adding to it over time. It automatically saves. It'll tell you the last time you went on it, etc. So it's all there and it'll be in your workspace.